Let's take a look at the nervous system, not to make it very complicated for you, but a little bit of information about the nervous system can be really helpful. When we take a look at the nervous system, we have two parts of the nervous system. You have the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. The central nervous system comprises of the brain and the spinal cord and your peripheral nervous system has the involuntary part which is the autonomic nervous system and the voluntary part which is the somatic nervous system. We will focus on the autonomic nervous system. Now the autonomic nervous system has three parts. You have the sympathetic, parasympathetic which you would have heard of quite a lot and there is one more which is called the enteric nervous system which is your gut. But we will be focusing on the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Let me explain that a little bit. Let's say I have a deadline um, on Friday right I may get a little stressed about it and I'm going to work towards it and try and finish all the stuff on time and that's fine that little bit of stress can help me to really get motivated energized now if I think too much about it I worry too much about it I get really anxious then the good stress kind of becomes bad stress you stress becomes distress distress is when I said start getting really anxious and I start really worrying too much about it and my body is tensed up and I can't think of anything else but that and my digestion is affected then your sympathetic nervous system is getting activated what it's doing is it's preparing your body for fight flight thinking that there is some kind of emergency and so your digestion gets affected because all the blood flows out from that into your limbs so that you can fight or flee a situation because your body really thinks there is danger although there isn't but this is your emotional brain it thinks there is danger and so it puts you into that state but let's say you do a bit of breathing you do some meditation you do certain exercises or tapping and your body starts calming down it comes back into a parasympathetic state which is the rest digest repair state where your body calms down and it goes back into a normal balanced state this is what can happen when you're faced with a stressful situation. Now let's add an element of threatening or survival threat kind of a situation to that. Let's say that you are going for your presentation and you meet with an accident and obviously in the, in the accident you're helpless, you're immobile, you're really afraid, there is that shock and all that unexpectedness. It could be isolating as well, maybe nobody was there to help you so that makes it a traumatizing situation. And that can stay in the body if you don't process it, which means that since you were not able to run away or fight that situation, all of that response, that freeze response, all of that uh, incomplete action, like Bessel van der Kolk talks about it, all those actions that were not incompleted is stored in your body and your body is frozen, it's stuck. And that is what is traumatizing. That is what your body can carry and it can have short term and long term consequences. And we'll be talking more about PTSD and other kinds of trauma. But this is to give you an example of what is stressful and what is traumatic. Everything that is stressful is not traumatic, but everything that's traumatic has a stress element in it. So think about it.